Well, speaking of prison, we just interviewed actor Danny Trejo. Yes, shout out Danny Trejo. That, that was a real fucking legend. Oh yeah, man, that was a real win for us right there. That That's was someone who I've been a long time fan for, and actually, he got his first acting speaking role at like forty one. And that was your first movie role? That was my first, uh, where I got tapped hardly. I think I did a couple extra movies before, but okay. just, but just, I hadn't planned on being an actor, just, it's a 50 bucks. Right, and I guess you were a 33 at the time, or older? I'll be 75, 34. If it was 85, you were born in? 44. 44, you were 41 years old. Yeah. Wow. See, that's dope. Yeah. That's dope. That's dope to be able to break. And he's like really broken through. Like he's had full on, you know, movies where he's the star of it and all of that. Like, like. Uh, uh, machete. Yeah, Machete. He was the star like, of Machete. On, like, with, with Robert De Niro being a co-star. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. Like, you got to give him a lot of credit. A lot of credit. He he even talked about on Machete how Robert De Niro, you know, because he did Heat with Robert De Niro back in the day. Right. Right, and he said how Robert De Niro showed up at the set was like, all the guys that have that have been here a long time, you know, the the big actors, the A-list actors, they're all really cool. They got no they got no airs about them. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I remember when we did see because I did Heat, and then Robert De Niro did uh, Machete for me, right? right? When we got we got Machete, Robert De Niro, everybody wanted to join, right? Because De Niro's in it. So I walk in, I bump into into. Robert De Niro on the set of Machete. And he goes, you, hey, you, number one on the call sheet, you. And I'm like, could I get you some coffee, Mr. De Niro? Because, because number one on the call sheet means you're the boss. Hey, you're right. number one. I'll get you coffee. <laughs> I'll still get you coffee. Man. And that's some shit. But the thing about Danny that I didn't know before we actually sat down and started researching him for the interview is that he has a massive criminal record and history in prisons and all types of violence and and you know he was never actually in a gang in like the Mexican mafia you know organized gang I mean there was some neighborhood shit that he was doing but he was like friends with the with the founder of the Mexican mafia uh, Peg Leg. I mean, from the minute I've ever seen him on screen, it's almost like you didn't have to tell me that. Like, like something about him, you could just look at him and tell, like, oh, they got them a real authentic motherfucker to be in this flick. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he definitely looked like one of these fucking, you know, he'd been to sand somewhere, San Quentin, San, one of these motherfucking sands out in Cali jails. You know what I mean? He looked like you just feel that energy coming off of him, like, you know, like, he wanted those real essays, you know? Well, I mean, in the interview, we talked about the whole American Me situation. You said you saved uh, Edward James Olmos' life? I got a letter from uh, a couple of the guys from Marion, and I read it. And I, the, I, the mistake I made was I got it, and I took it because it said, Receipt requested, and I got it ready. Ah, oh, shit! I look at the Marion, right? And, I, and so I read it, and they said, "You know, go to my dad. Please talk to my dad. And I'm sorry for this. And they apologized to me for for involving me, but they had to get this done. So I went to talk to this the the guy in command. And I remember asking my attorney Terry Roden, "What should I do?" And he said, "Well." <laughs> Would you rather be in trouble with the Mexican mafia or the feds? And I go, well, the feds got rules. <laughs> <laughs> he says, well, let's go. So we both went to talk to second in command while Joe was gone. And, uh, and, uh, and he said, well, you know, I think, you know, he really disrespected blah, 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 blah. He said, will you go talk to him? I go, yeah. So he refused to see me. He wouldn't see me. Edward James almost. Okay. Because he thought that I was... It was a setup. Yeah, and uh, I was in a mob, and I've never been in a mob. You know, I had always heard the rumors that Edward James almost had had a hit on him from the Mexican mafia, and that people around the production were killed. But it was always like urban urban myth. See, I you never had heard that. And I used to lo yeah, I love that movie. 
One of my favorite movies. Incredible movie. The mo- that was the movie that made me never want to go to prison. That movie right there. Mm. <laughs> when I saw those rape scenes and I'd never seen that before, I said, ah, like, that's oh, what I'm not going to do. <laughs> Fuck that shit. <laughs> and that was gotta, in like, you know, juvie, I'm, right? He was in juvie when that supposedly happened. Well, you know, it showed the head of the Mexican mafia getting raped. Right, and they're saying home. that did not happen in real life. That did so, not happen in real life. No, no high-ranking member, or really, I think any member of the Mexican mafia was supposed to have been, you know, could have been raped by a man. That that shows uh, just a level like you would lose all respect at that point. Nobody right. would listen to you. Right. You know. So he said over that situation, ten people were murdered. I right. think like six people in prison and four people outside of prison. Uh, I think one of the women that was like kind of. Uh, somewhat of an extra in the movie, you know, all the consultants and everything else like that, people lost their lives over that shit. And there was a hit on Almost, you know, the director. How do you feel as a, like, I'm just thinking in my mind, how do you feel as a James Almost knowing that people lost their lives over basically a theatrical decision that you made in your script? Like, like, well, why did that have to, why did that fucking scene have to be there? I'm going to tell you why, because they wanted to try to explain the scene later where he fucking, uh, when it was time for him to have sex with the, with the lady and he didn't really know how to deal with it. He started trying to fuck her in the ass because they try to act like that's all he knows from his, you know, um, from, from being institutionalized. You see? So they were trying to send some kind of message, um, you know, the writers and the directors and the producers, all those people have to take account for that. And what I'm saying is, like, that decision had direct consequences in the real world where, P, you tell me, at least 10 people lost their lives. That's crazy. Like, that's some shit that... This man got to be going. Maybe this is why we haven't really seen a lot of James almost. I mean, we see him, but not like that. You dig? Because I think he might have some demons behind that shit, man. That's crazy. Well, yeah. And he tried to say that he got the blessing of of Pegleg to do that scene. And that wasn't true. said, said, that's not true. Right. He said, "That, that never happened. Uh... Yeah, man. Uh, Mexican mafia is no joke. You know, shout out, shout out to the Mexican mafia. I, I never say anything negative about those guys. Like, you know, um, yeah, but they they took that shit very seriously, and it just shows the power of cinema, like the power of a of a major theatrical release like that. Where, yo, that was a big fucking deal. And it's the power of influence. You have to be careful with your influence sometimes because, you know, when you have influence, you see, if that wasn't such a big movie, maybe 10 people didn't have to die. You see what I'm saying? Like, maybe some legs would have got broken. I don't know. But, like, the fact that it was so big and you and this man has so much influence, that's part of it too, you know? Yeah, I mean, it was a, it was a dope movie. You can't you can't deny that part. Uh, little very puppet. well made. Little puppet in there. Yeah. And blood in, blood yeah, out. Man. Come on, Vlad. I, I gotta I gotta watch it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got I gotta watch it. Yeah, that you gotta watch it. That's a great one too, bruh. 